Welcome back to X and O's, the Joes. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. Thank you for joining us again. I've got a very exciting defensive um, look for you today. We're going to be talking some cover two, and really more specifically, we're going to be talking about read two. And if you don't understand read two or if you haven't heard of read two, this is my take on read two. We're going to hear about it right, right now. Now, before we get started, make sure that you hit that like and that subscribe button. It really does help us out. We've loved the, the attention that we get. We have people that are hitting, up, hitting us up. Wait, when are you going to drop another video? We love that. Now, over here, we have essentially a, a concept versus a spread, and so a, a lot of times we'll look to spread out, and people tend to be a little frightened about a five-man box, and I can understand why you would be frightened about a five-man box. Again, you're essentially inviting the run and and yes you are you're inviting the run but the idea is that if you're if you're running a four-man front or if you're running a three-man front you feel confident in those defensive linemen that you have up there to control their gaps you also have confidence that these guys are going to run and that these guys are going to run so if these guys and these guys are not running then you have an issue you, you should have no worries about this guy or else he should not be playing this position. Your Mike should be a guy that is, that is, is, well, is well adept at filling A gap, filling that B gap. Really, those are the only two vulnerable gaps that you have in a four-man front. And then obviously, if you were running a three-man front, he would be responsible for the opposite A of the nose. So... What we do with Reed, and I don't want to spend too much time up here. I really want to spend more time back here. I feel like a lot of times when we're doing these defensive breakdowns, we spend so much time in the front that we don't give enough credence to the secondary. And I really want to make sure that we pay attention to what we're doing in the secondary. So I'm going to start here on the corners. These corners are playing cover two hard. Now, excuse me, when I say they're playing cover too hard, I mean they're pressed hard because they want to get hands and redirect these, these, these number one receivers inside where they have help from these two guys. Now, the principle is, is they will work underneath number one while they read number two. So, if number one goes vertical, they're going to sink with number one while they're looking at number two. If number two goes out, they're going to jump number two immediately. They're going to jump number two immediately. If number two goes vertical, they'll just stay underneath number one. If number two disappears inside, then they will lock on with number one. And finally, if number two bubbles, they'll drive on number two right now. So they have principles that they have to follow. Jam one, C2. That's jam one, C2. That's where his principle is. And depending on what number two does, he's going to make that adjustment. Now, at the same time, this safety is reading number two as well. So ball is snapped. It's a pass. He's reading two. He's playing between two and one. He's reading two. If two disappears, I'm excuse me, if two goes flat, he's jumping one right now. One's his guy. Whatever number one does, he's going to take him. If number two goes vertical, if number two goes vertical, he's going to stay between two and one. So if he if two goes vertical, he's going to go there. Because if one stops, he 
the cornerback is just going to be on him. So two goes vertical. He stays in between two and one. If two disappears inside, he looks one. So if they do a double slant concept and two slants inside, he's just going to drive on number one slant. If number two verticals, he drives on one. So if one fade, I'm excuse me, if number two swings, I said verticals, I don't know why. If number two swings, he'll drive on number one. So if number one goes vertical, he's over top of number one. If number one slants, he's driving on number one. So we're in a cover two look, but we're reading two. We're legitimately reading number two. Now, that's really simple. We've got our linebacker. Our linebacker, our linebacker is going to look to collision two every time. His job is to collision two. So if two tries to slant, he's going to knock number two down. His job is to collision number two. He's going to jam number two within that, within the, within that step. So he's going to collision two. If two goes inside, he's got him. If two goes inside, he's got him. If two disappears, two disappears, he's going to look one. So if two bubbles, he'll look one. If two goes flat, he'll look one. So number one will have a guy underneath him and a guy over top of him if number two goes flat or if he bubbles. If two goes vertical, he's going to collision and sink underneath him. So if we get four verticals where both of these guys go vertical, they're going to have a safety in between them and a cornerback and a linebacker sinking underneath them. So that's how we play versus a two-by-two two when we're reading number two. But what happens on what we perceive as a one-receiver side? Well, that's a, very good, that's a very good question. What happens on a one-receiver side when we're reading two? So let's just say if we took this guy away and he, he went over here. and We'll come back to that. No worries. But now we have a one-receiver we have a one receiver side. His job is still the same because now if he's here, who's number two? The back. So this is the back right now. So if the back goes that way, he's not number two. But let's say if the back comes this way, the back swings, he's got number two. If the back comes into the flat, he's got number two. So he's going to jam one. C2. So if he's jamming number one and number one tries to do a backside slant, he's going to jam and work number one in because there is no number two. Meanwhile, this free safety, if he sees this, he knows that if number one is slanting, if number one is slanting, that he's going to drive the one. So that guy's bracketed. He's over top. Everything's taken care of. He doesn't have to drive on it because he sees this guy here. So he's going to drive the one. He's going to jam one. C2 over here. He's going to read two. Now two's over here. That's his first responsibility. He's going to read two. So he'll probably move himself over to be able to read two. Now, two blocks, he's one, one goes vertical. He's still here, he's still underneath. So you still got over top and underneath bracketed on number one on the back side. That makes it really easy for this guy to sink and be a spy 
and just read the eyes of the quarterback. Make sure he doesn't, he's not able to escape. Make sure he's not able to escape there. So there's no escape here. There's no escape outside because he should be sitting and looking, spying that quarterback. We've got number one bracketed with the corner and with the free safety over top, with the corner and with the outside linebacker, anything short. So we see how we're going we're gonna to handle it on the one receiver side, but then the question becomes, well, what do we do on the three receiver side? Well, first off, you got to understand if it's a three receiver side, our linebackers are going to shift. So now we bring that backer that was playing at that outside edge back into the box to handle this backside A gap. If he's there or if we switch it and we put the nose away in the – the three to the strength, that B gap, that, 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 that backside backer will be here. This might will be responsible for the A in the run game. But back to the pass. We already know what he has. He has jam one, C2. Principle never changes. It doesn't matter how many people you put over here. So he's going to jam one. If one goes vertical... He's jamming and sinking underneath. If two goes there, he's jumping two. If two goes there, he's jumping two. If two does that, free safety automatically over top of number one. Now he's here. He's got one, two. He's trying to get hands on in collision two if two goes vertical. So if two goes vertical, he collisions and sinks. So if one goes vertical and two goes vertical and three goes to the flat, who's got him? The same guy who's been responsible for the flat, the cornerback. He's jam one, C2. If one goes vertical and two goes vertical, look three. So as he sinks under underneath one and he's seeing two, if three goes flat, he jams right now. If he goes vertical and he goes vertical and three goes on the swing, he's going right now. And we're still good because he's going to collision two. If he goes here, he's over top anyway. So now... Both of those guys are taken care of, one, two, three, and now it essentially becomes a matchup situation. So we see one, we see two, we jam one, we, the cornerback jam one, see two, look three. Free safety, read two, read two, jump one. Linebacker, collision two, collision number two, Collision two, carry two vertical, jump one, short, C3. Now, if you get one of my favorite pass concepts, the four verts here, yeah, you know what? It's always an issue. But we're going to stick with our principles. So, number one, Two, three, all go vertical. That means it's cornerbacks sinking with number one. The free safeties in between one and two. This safety playing his position should be looking here, especially if he blocks. Now, if he doesn't block, if he goes here, if he goes there, he'll probably pop his eyes here. We're vulnerable there. We may have to get home. Sometimes the offense is just better than your defense. But in the, what should happen is here, he should get a collision here if it's a pass, which should give that guy a chance to get down. And, again, if he is here, if the ball's thrown deep, those two have to try to, have to, try to collapse on the middle here 
if that guy is able to get a free release, which, again, in the past he shouldn't because this guy should step run read, open up in collision number three as he's crossing. So that's how we would handle a three-by-one in our read two. That's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed the little tutorial. There's always more. You can always get into more of the minutiae. And anytime you want to know anything, just leave a comment. Leave a comment underneath. If there's something that you want to see, if there's something more you want to know, let me know so that I can then get back to you and try to make it as, as, as fruitful of a, of a relationship as I can. I only think of things that in my mind would give me trouble or things that I'm interested in. I also love to hear from you and hear things that you are interested in. So if you definitely reach out and tell us, hey, you know what? I'd love to know what you would do versus this, or I'd love to know a 4-4. Four, four. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Also, I need you to, to go out and support the people who support us. If you have a team, a youth league team, a flag team, a, um, your, your high school team, your, your, your travel ball team, if you do anything that has to do with athletics and you're looking for um, team apparel, travel wear, uniforms, hit up our sponsors, Say Less Sports Tees. They can do anything from full sublimations all the way down to T-shirt and short combinations. They have all kind of prices. You want to try to go and check them out, SayLessSports.com. That's SayLessSports.com. And if you have any specialty orders or team sales, Get, shoot them an email, saylessportstees.com. That's saylessportstees.com. It's probably somewhere down here. Um, saylessports.com and saylessportstees.com. Once again, thank you for everything that you do. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. Until next time, stay safe.